Here we go. Go. It's exciting to see you out there. And I see some of my heart faces, and it's wonderful to have you out there, too. Um, today, when I was preparing, I probably over-prepared, you know. I, there was so much information about the eclipse and about how to watch it and how what to do, and you know, so that I was so far into my left brain that my beloved husband had to say, we we're going to really be there for the job. <laughs> <laughs> it's entirely up to you. Nice jammies, but I don't think that it's, you know, so I had to scurry along and, and, and try and work my way out of my um, left brain because I, you know, what I have on my left brain is two pieces of paper that I can cover in about 37 seconds. But what I really bring is when we are able to connect like we do. And so, of course, to connect like we do, we need people like April to come up to the front, and uh, Jim, and um, we need, good, okay, we need, we need four people because we go down the aisles together afterwards. And what this does, you sing this little song that I learned a long time ago, uh, because it just made my heart happy, because it seemed such, um, so relevant to our lives, you know, is that um, the, the name of this song is How Could Anybody Ever Tell You You Were Anything Less Than Beautiful? And it's what happens to us as we go through life, I think sometimes we get bumped, you know, and pretty soon you don't remember that you're a child of God, that you're beautiful. It doesn't matter if you're, there's a little droop here now and then or all of those things, that none of that matters. And I've always found the best way to make my connection is through music. Mm -hmm. It creates a vibration in my being, and I think it creates a vibration in everyone's being, if they but let it. And that, that vibration within your heart makes, you, makes it easier for you to have the divine forces come in. And part of what we're talking about today is the power of energy in our lives. And so those divine forces will move into us. Now, I've probably talked longer than the song is, and I'm sorry. <laughs> We're going to work on getting me back into my heart place. And so if you would start us, April. How could anyone ever tell you you are anything less than beautiful? How could anyone ever tell you you are less Could anyone ever tell you 
will and let those emotions leak. If it means a tear falls, hooray. Hooray. Well, I, I um, zealously created safety information for you on how to watch or not watch the eclipse because I'm an old nurse, you know. An old retired nurse. Once you're a nurse, you're always, always a nurse. <laughs> so I, I, um, I looked for information, and a lot of it you already have, so I will just briefly reiterate it. First of all, do not look into the sun. You think, oh, it's getting dark, it'll be all right. It will not be all right. The rays from the sun burn the back of your retina, and there's no medical fix for that. And you might not even feel it. Right. There are no nerve endings for pain on your retina. And so you won't feel it, and you'll think, what did that old bat know? She didn't know anything. You know, I can look at the sun. But you can't. There's consequences to it. There's negative consequences. So the, the internet, that font of information, has been filled with resources. And so I tried to pick two that I thought were particularly interesting. One is I was out uh, garage sailing and now I did 25 steps. Right. And you do, you do not look at the sun through the hole. No, no, no. You hold it out and you allow the sun to go through the holes and make an image on the ground. And it's better if you have a white piece of something, sheet, poster board, paper, or something. And you direct this until the image hits the white paper and you can see it. Or the best one I heard was you can use a Ritz cracker. <laughs> the Ritz cracker. And I thought, well, even if it doesn't work, you can eat the Ritz cracker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so what do you do with the Ritz cracker? You do it just like you would this. Oh, so, so you hold it out. You hold it out and let the light go through the holes. Awesome. And, you get and hope cheese. that it goes through. You know, you're, it's not like um, gyms where you could put a needle through it and make the hole a little bigger. If you try and make the hole a little bigger on this, it's all over. You know? It's key. Great <laughs> 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 the cheese and the Ritz cracker. Right. <laughs> 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 cheese. So, uh, Ronnie's idea is the best. Don't get yourself, don't get caught in the energy that you make a mistake and think, oh, I'm not going to be able to, and then, you know, you do something awry, go in and watch it on television for the, probably the next 10 days. <laughs> you know how to be. Every station will have done something a little different, and, but that's our job. Johnny's picked a good one and can enjoy it inside also. Probably be on YouTube too. NASA is going to be showing a lot of them on Facebook. Oh yeah, Facebook. Yes, I forgot. And about NASA, that. it'll be NASA that'll be that'll be showing. Showing it, showing it right. Uh -huh. So, did you catch that? NASA. Everybody catch it? Facebook, NASA. <laughs> Option number forty-seven. <laughs> <laughs> so, historically, you know, I was always um, intricate, interested. And historically, how did they figure it out? Because you, you hear these stories about how they, they maneuvered people or threatened people or people were terrified or, or people um, won big prizes because they said this is what was going to happen. And then it did happen, ta-da, ta-da. And if you were good to them, they would take it away and the light would come back. And, you know, and how did they know that? And what I found, uh, which was probably the more interesting thing, is they did it numerically. Uh, for long periods of time, the people who particularly were astronomers kept detailed records about what happened in the sky and counted. And so it's a numerical replication that we have. And it's not always based on our, our um, current calendar. And so you, it's hard to, for you to figure out how to do the counting, and frankly. That's why we have these machines now. That's why we don't have to do that counting. But, um, that's how they did it, is that the people who were in charge, we forget, I forget, maybe you don't forget, but I forget that we're not the first people to be so smart, no. you know, uh, because before um, printing presses, generally speaking, people didn't get um, an education. There weren't public schools until America came along. <laughs> and, um, so people had to work very hard, and they didn't have time to learn. So, and they didn't have any books that they could afford to buy if they did learn. So until the printing press came along and made written material available, why a lot of people didn't read and wouldn't have had time to count 
when the stars were due to change. But that's how they did it. But the people who were educated were very well educated. And they were able to pass this information along uh, to other people because sometimes you wouldn't see very many solar eclipses in the lifetime if the people who were the astronomers weren't keeping records for you to follow on to. So, one, one of the interesting things is that a lot of people saw the eclipse as a commentary on the leaders, their leaders. And I, and I know that's been an issue, and again, Tom has been my restraining hand that says, <laughs> Mary, we don't talk politics from the pulpit. That's, it's, first of all, it's against law, and second of all, it's, it's very bad taste. But I, I thought this was just an interesting look that um, the current leader of the United States has a um, was born in Gemini, June of um, June sixth, but his rising sign is a Leo, which the eclipse happens to be in a, a Leo time, and so hmm. I just offer that up. I don't say anything else. I just move on because what we really want to do together today is to talk about spiritual options. So Mary, she has a question about what is a rising sign. Yeah. Can we explain? Oh, well, yeah, would you? <laughs> so it's our ascendant. It's how we present ourselves to the world. Okay. So our, our sun sign is our essence, and our rising sign is how we present ourselves. And so, just in a nutshell. Great. Mm -hmm. And, and um, thank you. My nut wouldn't have been in a shell if I had to try to explain it. <laughs> so as you look at information on your your um, your spiritual options, how to do this? I looked again. I did lots of research, and um, too much research probably. But <clears throat> what they say is, don't start something new. They say it's not a time to think, okay, I'll, I'll initiate this project that I've been thinking about doing for a long time, and I don't exactly understand why, but it has something to do with the short duration <coughs> of the eclipse itself. You know, it starts here in the Bay Area at 9, actually at 2 minutes to 9. It peaks at 10, uh, 15, and it's over by 11.38. So... It's a, it's a short window that this happens, and they say that there's, um, there are so many things that we don't understand, even though people think that we understand a lot, and we do understand a lot more than we used to. But there are things um, that happen with solar flares, there are things that happen when the energy blocks the natural flow of light energy, even though it's only for a short window of time that we don't understand the consequences of, or how that works. First of all, if we, we as a society, can't explain it scientifically, we pretty clearly detrust it. Distrust it? Mm -hmm. We don't like it at all. We don't trust it. So, um, it is a, a, a limiting factor. And I think that, I think that I just need to turn my papers over because what you need now is for us to move into our right brain. Mm. And one of the things that, and that uh, when we were preparing for this, and, I, and we have already started <coughs> creating an energy pool. We want to have an energy pool that we create together because we believe that when you have a community mm. that is a spiritually based community, that one of the things that you bring to each other is spiritual energy that can be available in a crisis. Uh, Tom and I used to have our um, church services 20 years ago, and that's one of the things we would tell our people is to feel the energy in the room, know that if you are out into the world and you bump into a problem that feels too much, you move to that energy and draw it to you as a resource. We open ourselves to that, and that's what we want to do today. We want to do it in a safe way. We're not saying that anybody can just come in and pull on your energy. That's why we're creating a pool of energy for the specific purpose of allowing both the divine 
because the divine can come through and use our energy when we offer it. They don't just uh, allow people willy-nilly to run around the heavens. I don't know if you can have feet in heaven, but... Um, and then tap into people's energy to accomplish what they think their goals should be down here. It doesn't work that way. You have to give permission. You have to consciously say, we're creating energy for you to use to facilitate the growth of me individually, my personal growth, my uh, community's growth, our own community here, and the greater community, particularly in this country. This is called the U.S. Uh, solar uh, eclipse because it starts in Portland, it leaves in South Carolina, covers the entire country. It, it, we haven't had an eclipse like that in quite that manner that, that I was able to find in my research. So this wow. is for America. Wow. This is our country. It's 1918. It's 99 years. That it was a full American eclipse? But not Hawaii. Yeah. I wasn't there. I think no. it was in so, <laughs> You were there. My mother. But you, okay. <laughs> Um, so this is an opportunity, if we treat it as an opportunity. It's an opportunity for us to <clears throat> fill our own being with um, love and protection and energy and to consciously put that energy out into the community with some safeguards. And Janet will put those in. Janet's going to lead this well, for all the reasons we all know. <laughs> it's really cool. um, but I think it that, that I encourage us all to facilitate that within ourselves, to consciously come together and say, we're going to come together as a group. Uh, people like Richard are, are linking in with us. Richard is the president of UCM. Mm -hmm. to, to put energy into the pot, if you will, the energy field, the force that we're creating together. And so I think I'm going to turn this over to Janet without any further ado. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to do a back and forth thing. Because okay. as Mary gets inspired, as you know, she is an incredible channel for the highest energy. So we're going to do okay. it back and forth. And I invite, if any of our musicians want to join us, yeah. they, they, always, they, they always make it up. <laughs> sure. Along with me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and what I invite you to do is, before we begin, I want to offer this piece of information that I received from Mother Earth. As you know, one of my biggest connections is Mother Waters, Mother Earth. And I spent some time saying, what is it that is most needed? And what I got is the reason there's a fire in Oregon there's a reason that there's going to be difficulty maybe seeing the eclipse visually is that we're not supposed to necessarily see it. Mama Earth doesn't want us to see it. She wants us to feel it. Experience. And she wants us to, to experience it. So what I offer is during that time, don't frustrate yourself with all of the techniques that we have created to see it, but really spend time going inside and receive the energy of it. As, as uh, my teacher would say, let the energy flow through you and let some of it stick to the funnel so that you retain part of the energy that we're creating together so that you personally feel sustained and protected and inspired in this window. Wonderful. Yes. So I invite you to just very gently Allow yourself to go to the heart of your being. Let us go to the center. And as you feel the protection of all the archangels, of all of our spiritual guides, our beloved prophets, feel the container of Creator being built inside you and around you.
receive your protection. <clears throat> in this room, in this place, acknowledging your own power and the power of the divine. We are so pleased that you have come together and that you have opened your hearts and allowed the energy from one heart to touch another heart. For when indeed you are gathered together, the force and the power are beyond your understanding. That you would create a space in this busy technical world to allow the forces of the divine to be made manifest, to flow out from you, from your community, into all of the troubled places. You must trust in the divine plan And they'd say, and thank you very much, but we don't need any help in figuring it out. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Let me get back out of the way. <laughs> I felt like that was for me. I'm always trying to think of how the divine ought to work it out. And really what they want from us <clears throat> is that we stand aside and trust. For trust in the goodness and light is part of what allows it to flow unobstructed into your very being. So you must trust and you must open. And as you trust and open, changes can occur. Perhaps not the changes you imagined or even thought were best. But know that they are for the highest good and that ultimately the divine plan will be made manifest in this earth. That the source of all sources has the power to create any change which they want or think the earth needs. But right now they allow to remain in the hands of those students on this plane the opportunity 
to bring in the positive energies and create the change that's required. You have increased the opportunity for this change by your coming together, by your opening your heart and your eyes with tears and your full vibration to know that you are loved in this room and that you love in this room. And with that power, all change is possible. My pain is eclipsed by love. My love is filling up the universe. The moon eclipses the sun. I can rest. I can be at peace. We are whole.
we are bringing healing. Breathe in. Breathe out. I was so blessed, so blessed to see the power of the room and the people in the room and the people in the room who go their own way and do their own work and make their goodness and their kindness and their heart manifest. And the hair is standing up on my arms. It was such a powerful experience. And I want you to open as you can and feel that and understanding the synchronicity of the divine that we should be together here in this moment, in this moment, understanding the power, making the light and energy manifest. Whether it's new to us or a reminder, body grounded to the chair and to the floor. Mm -hmm. Feel your energy integrating beautifully into your body and into your etheric body and into your spiritual aura. Allow yourself to feel and know that you are here right now, fully integrated, fully grounded, fully present fully present to what we will do and what we are doing right now because we are invoking the opening of what will occur tomorrow at 9 a.m. We are invoking that opening now and preparing the path with the powerful spiritual energies. know that you are enough. You are more than enough. I agree with Mary. The hair on my entire body is just tingling with the power that is in this room. And with the gentleness that is in this room. There is such gentleness and such strength. And that only comes from the divine spiritual heart opening beings. We're going to invite you to do three ohms <coughs> and see it as a grounding force. <coughs>
Did you die? Does Ma say anything about it? Wait a minute. Thank you, everyone. Uh, for those of you who know, I channel a spirit guide named Ma. Um, and Mahalo Leal. And I, I've been calling him Ma since I was five years old. And what Ma has said about the eclipse is that don't forget, it might look like it's happening out there, but it's happening in here. And, and if you go on Google about eclipse, people have been honoring the eclipse or being afraid of the eclipse since we started on the planet, since the first eclipse started. Imagine if you were an agrarian society and there's no communication other than when you see each other, but all of a sudden the sun is black. There were, you'll find all of these amazing legends and myths and superstitions. It's, it's fascinating to read from, from the Inuits to the Cherokee to the he, uh, a fellow in Greece that, uh, 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 you know, 500 years before Christ uh, was talking about it and knew when it was coming. I mean, this is just an amazing event that happens. And we have millions of people that are following the trajectory. And for you, let it get rid of, because that's what my spirit guide's saying. Don't see this as a time if it's an amazing solar system event. It's an amazing event for you to let go, to release, and that's what I started out with this morning. So if you're holding on to anger, have you ever heard of anger making people well? Never. Never. It makes you sick. It makes you sick. So if you have anger towards yourself, towards the Creator, anger towards your next door neighbor. Right now I'm real angry at fleas that invaded my house. But my anger isn't making them go away, you know. Think of what is it in you that is causing you to be unhappy? Because you're the one that caused the unhappiness. Not the event, but the unhappiness. So the eclipse is a time for you to let go. And that's what Ma keeps saying, it's a time to let go. And thank you so much, Mary, and thank you so much, Janet, for, mm. for putting that together. I and musicians. Yeah. Yeah, and musicians, yeah. This is amazing. Well, it's now time for us to do it. Oh, you said right before Ronnie. You can do it now. Yes. Oh, Reverend Chris Brown, you have want something to say? Only if you move in front of me. It's done. It's done. Um, I asked Donnie. What is your name? Donnie. Yeah. <laughs> I asked Donnie for time, and she has no idea, and I mean no idea what I'm going to say. And so um, I, I want you to trust her, and if you don't like anything about what I'm going to say, um, it's my fault that she said yes to me. Um, I, I just want to share really briefly something about today. Um, I was ordained here uh, as a reverend a year ago, um, and that's been wonderful. And also, shortly after that, my dad passed, and my mom has been in a state of transition and getting ready to leave or not. And the relationship between my mom and me has been bristly. She actually, we finally figured out she can't tolerate my energy. So as soon as I get in any proximity to her, she has to leave. So she doesn't do well with me nearby. And long story short, the running joke is, she's is a very strong, stoic woman. How frail will my mother need to be before I am of any use to her? In um, a month ago, she was uh, released from something fairly nominal in the hospital, but she was released to hospice home. And 
about three weeks ago, a friend and I built a bridge. And we made a really strong bridge, and we put all sorts of people on the other side and um, let her soul know that that bridge was there. And over the course of the last uh, three weeks, I've been talking to her, and it never felt like that was a conversation to have my mother and religion and even outright spirituality are really challenging. But um, as she's gotten closer and closer to passing, um, nobody could figure out why she was here. Why, are, why is she still here? I mean, we're okay that she's here. We have no idea why she's still here. And so, um, particular, in particular, um, most of the people in our family, which is a very small family, but they're spread out. We've been speaking to people and having them, you know, put the phone up by your ear and just saying whatever they want to say. Actually, last night I spoke to Germany for two hours, and it was an amazing thing because we got to really go through some of Mom's life and my dad's life, and and, and it put me in this extraordinary state of appreciation for my mom. And whereas prior to that moment, when I had gone to sit with her or hold her hand, I actually would have to back up. And I also thought, if I bring those people forward in that bridge, she's going to be so pissed. She's going to think I'm trying to get rid of her. But after that phone call and after effectively embodying my mom's light and shine and goodness, I was able to go back and sit with her, and I held her hand for the first time. Um, first of my life, probably. But anyway, I held her hand. And in the moment of holding her hand, I was able to bring each person, this person, in. And I said, and so-and-so is so excited, and, and his heart is so open, and his arms are outstretched, and he's so excited that you're going to be seeing him really soon. And I went through each of the people that were in that line, and each of the pets, which is probably more than the people. And I just said, they're so very excited to be with you again. And something in, in me, I got that shaking. Like, I think I've just done something. And I actually got up from my mom's bed, and I walked into the kitchen. And I sat down with this particular caretaker who was super solid. And I go, um, can I ask you some questions, and, and can we just talk? And so we talked for 20 minutes. And what I got from her was a level of reassurance that I needed. And when I went back to mom, she was gone. She was gone. And um, I was 8 o'clock this morning, so I was two hours before the church started today, just if you want a reference call. And so this idea of how frail is this immensely stoic, stubborn woman going to have to be? Well, she needed until the very, very, very end in order for me to be of use to her. And the comment that my partner said, and, and, and she doesn't compliment me often, but she said, you know, I think today you became a reverend. I didn't do it alone. Some of you know more, some of you know less. I just appreciate everyone so much. And I truly hope that my share just now was very much in keeping with, you know, what was shared before. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank yes. Well done. After you've done all you can. 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 Yes, stand. Whoa, hold on a second. Got it. Uh, 
So the, the light in my eyes is real. And the other thing is, I, I wrote a prayer for a family that doesn't do prayer. And I'm really proud of it, and I'm going to put it the only place it could be, which is not at her house. But I'm going to put it up on the credenza over here, and you guys can read it. And Thank, Thank you, you so very much. Thank, Thank you, Chris. Chris. <coughs> okay, now we're going to have you get your donation ready and uh, put it between put it between two hands and just just put energy on that donation. That this whatever you're donating, as much as you feel you can afford, and sometimes just. The empty envelope comes in, and I know you've put all the energy in that envelope that you have right now, and we certainly do appreciate it. On the back of your program, you're going to follow along. It says, Giving to the ministry, from which we receive our spiritual support and nurturing, is an affirmation in consciousness of the truth that spirit is the prospering power enriching every area of our lives. Blesses me abundantly. All I give comes back to me. Blesses me abundantly. All I give comes back to me. Blesses me abundantly. All I give comes back to me. Blesses me abundantly. All I give comes back to me. Blesses me abundantly. All I give comes back to me. And blesses me abundantly. All I give comes back to me. And blesses me abundantly. All I give comes back to me. Blesses me abundantly. All I hear comes back to me. Blesses me abundantly. All I give comes back to me. Blesses me abundantly. And for those of you people who are new, the little yellow prayer request goes in this bowl right here on top of the altar. Okay. And I just want to say something about that. Please send energy to our wonderful firefighter, Jake. Both his firefighter family and his home family are really devastated by the homicide that happens a couple of nights ago. And this energy of this room will really, I know, help them. Both Oakland Fire and San Jose Fire have been really impacted by this. Reverend Ronnie Grigsby, do you have a song for us? Mr. Birthday Guy. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Don't sing something sad. Don't sing something sad. Have you had your limit of sad for the day? <laughs> you don't need to worry. And don't you be afraid. Joy comes in the morning. Troubles, they don't last always. Oh, there's a friend in spirit who will wipe your tears away. And if your heart is broken, then lift your hands and say, Oh, I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand. No matter what may come my way, my life is in your hand. You don't need to
to worry and don't you be afraid joy comes in the morning Troubles, they don't last always. For there's a friend in spirit who will wipe your tears away. And if your heart is broken, then lift your hands and say, Oh, I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand. No matter what may come my way, my life is in your hands. Though the test and trials may seem to get you down and all your friends and loved ones are nowhere to be found remember there's a friend in spirit who can wipe your tears away and if your heart is broken then lift your hands and say, Oh, I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand. No matter what may come my way, my life is in your hands. I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand. No matter what may come my way, my life is in your hands. I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand. No matter what may come my way, my life is in your hands. My life is in your hands. My life is in your hands. Thank you.